I suppose we should that. mention the story of why it did become um, the Byzantine um, general. Yes, that would be a good thing to talk about. Uh, I had, Edgar Dijkstra published very early on in one of his papers, he posed a problem that's called the dining philosopher's problem. And that's, a lot of people have used that as an example of, you know, how to do this in some language or other. And it received much more attention than I really thought it deserved. I mean, Edser has done some, did some brilliant work. And the uh, dining philosophers was, you know, I've seen, didn't seem to be terribly important to me, but it got a lot more attention than things that really deserve more attention. And I realized it's because it had a cute story about it involving philosophers eating bowls of spaghetti with prior two forks, and each philosopher just had one fork or something like that. And, uh, and so I realized, I thought that the, Byzantine, that the problem was really important and that it would be good to have a catchy story to go with it. So I decided the story of uh, a bunch of generals who had to reach agreement on something and they could only send messengers and, and stuff like that. And I originally called it the Albanian generals because at that time Albania was a, the most communist country in the world and it was a black hole. And I figured nobody in Albania is never going to uh, object to that. Unfortunately, uh, uh, Jack Goldberg, who is my boss at SRI, said, you really should think of, you know, something else because, you know, there are Albanians in the world. And so I thought, and it's suddenly Byzantine generals, and of course, with the connotation of intrigue, that was the perfect uh, name. I had uh, had the time clocks out paper with its algorithm for implementing an arbitrary state machine, and but it was clear that when you had dealt with communication, you had to worry about messages being lost, and uh, yeah, at the very least, uh, so you had to worry about failures, and so that led me to say, how can I extend the algorithm from the uh, time clocks paper and uh, make it uh, fault tolerant, and. I guess when I was through it, it didn't look much like the uh, algorithm from the uh, Time Clocks paper, but uh, as I said, it, it was an obvious next step. And then to build a state machine, you just have a series of numbered agreements mm -hmm. that, uh, on what the state machine should do next. The system did something every 20 milliseconds or something. So there was a natural uh, separation of a, uh, an agreement protocol done every 20 milliseconds and ordered by time. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you get to an asynchronous systems, uh, you don't have that every 20 milliseconds. And so uh, the, you use what's effectively a counter and that somebody, you know, to propose the, the next th action of the state machine, you say, well, action 37 has been done. So now this is, we're now agreeing on action 38. And so that's, that becomes the sequencing mechanism, and that Byzantine agreement is still the building block. Yeah. It's just that you don't have a, a, well, a real-time clock, you have a, a logical time clock. From the synchronous to the asynchronous world, there was also a shift in the failure model, in that people were worried about computers crashing, not about computers behaving erratically, mm -hmm. doing the wrong thing. Uh, I mean, this can still be a problem in, in practice, but it's a very, it's, considered to be sufficiently rare that uh, it can either be ignored or you assume that you have some mechanism outside the system to stop the system and restart it again if that happens. Uh, I do remember once in, I think it was in the either the 70s or early 80s when the ARPANET, or I forget whether it was the ARPANET still or the internet, uh, went down because some computer, you know, didn't just crash, it started doing the wrong thing. And since the algorithms were presumably tolerant of, uh, or people worried about making them tolerant for crash failures, but not of or Byzantine failures, but malicious failures like, or not, that are called Byzantine failures, or even uh, just 
uh, failures uh, causing computers to, to, to behave randomly.